Lesson 13.3b, using theoretical probability to make a qualitative prediction. Qualitative is an adjective, just like quantitative. And the definition of qualitative is concerned with quality or qualities. A qualitative prediction is a prediction based on observable data. In video 12.4b, we learned how to make qualitative predictions using experimental probability. We can use theoretical probabilities in the same way to help us predict or compare how likely events are going to occur. Tala pulls a sock out of her drawer without looking and puts it on. And the sock is green. There are five green socks, six red socks, and four yellow socks left in her drawer. She pulls out a second sock without looking at it. Is it likely that she'll be wearing matching socks? We need to find the theoretical probability that Tala picks a matching sock and the probability that she picks one that does not match. The probability of matching is equal to five green socks over 15 socks left in the drawer. There are five plus six is 11, plus four is 15. So there's 15 socks left in the drawer. After she put that green one on, she's got a five fifteenths chance of having the correct color, a color green that would match the one she put on. We can simplify that to one third. The probability of not matching would be one minus the probability of matching. If one third is the probability of matching, then two thirds must be the probability of not matching. We take one whole and subtract that probability of matching one third, and it's equal to two thirds. Now let's explain this a little bit more so we completely understand. For the matching sock, it would have to be green. There were five green socks in the drawer. And since there were five green, six red, four yellow, that's 15 socks, that's our denominator, the probability of matching when she picked the second sock was 5 fifteenths, which can be simplified to one third. For the not matching, we subtract this one third from one. We do one minus the probability of matching, which is one third. We can do it as 5 fifteenths, and one is 15 fifteenths, isn't it? Same numerator and denominator, so that's a 1. Minus 5 fifteenths is 10 fifteenths. That's equal to 2 thirds when simplified, which makes sense. If 5 of the 15 are green and match the socks she put on, the remaining 10 of the 15 socks won't match. That's the 2 thirds. To find the not matching socks, we subtract the matching socks from 1, or as 15 fifteenths, Tala has one-third probability of the second sock being a match and two-thirds probability of the second sock not matching. All 2,500 students in a high school are assigned a locker and a four-digit combination for its lock. The combinations are made up of digits 0 through 4, and the digits can be repeated, such as 2222. Is it likely that fewer than six of the students are issued the combination one, two, three, four? So there are four digits to the combination, and the first digit can be zero, one, two, three, or four. Same with the second, third, and fourth digit. It's going to be one of these five numbers, one of five. So that's one fifth. Same with the second digit, it's one of five numbers, and this is one of five numbers, and this is one of five numbers. So if the combination was one, two, three, and four, one is one-fifth of these numbers. See, two is one-fifth of these numbers. See how we did that? Now we just multiply one-fifth times one-fifth times one-fifth times one-fifth, and we get one six hundred twenty-fifth. There's a probability of 1 625th that the combination is 1, 2, 3, 4. 
But it's asking, is it likely that fewer than six of the students are issued that combination? That's the question we need to answer. Is it likely that fewer than six of the students are issued the combination one, two, three, four? We have one 625th is equal to x over 2,500 students. What do we need to multiply 625 by to equal 2,500? We can multiply it by 4. That means the numerator needs to be multiplied by 4, which means x is equal to 4. The probability of students getting the same four-digit combination is 4 2,500ths, or 4 students out of the 2,500 students. Yes, it is likely that fewer than six students are issued the combination one, two, three, four. It's likely that four students are issued the combination one, two, three, four. Let's try another one. Sam has a bag of 20 cookies. Eight are chocolate, two are lemon, seven are oatmeal, and three are toffee. If Sam picks a cookie at random, which type of cookie is he least likely to pick? Justify your answer. We think, well, there are fewer lemon cookies than any other, but we need to justify why lemon would be the answer. We can see that there's only two out of the 20 cookies, so let's justify it. The probability of chocolate is eight out of 20, or eight twentieths. The probability of lemon is two out of 20, or two twentieths. The probability of oatmeal is seven out of 20, or seven twentieths. And the probability of toffee is 3 out of 20, or 3 twentieths. We can see that the probability of lemon has the least probability. So it would be lemon. That's the cookie he would be least likely to pick. And we can see chocolate would have the greatest probability because that's 8 out of 20, or 8 twentieths. Now, this lesson was about qualitative predictions. Before we finish this 13.3, I want to go over a quantitative review with you. We did quantitative in the previous video, 13.3a. So during a raffle drawing, one-fourth of the ticket holders will receive a prize. The winners are equally likely to win one of two prizes, a coupon for ice cream or a large pizza. If there are 360 ticket holders, Predict the number of people who will win a pizza. First thing we do is we find one-fourth of 360. That's 90. And since they're equally likely to win one of two prizes, they're equally likely to win either one of these two prizes, the ice cream or the pizza, the 90 is going to be divided by 2. There's two prizes. That's 45. That means 45 people are likely to win a pizza out of the 360. But this also means, because we divided it by two, that 45 people are likely to win an ice cream. We're finished with 13.3. We're going to move on to 13.4, the last lessons in the textbook. We're going to talk about designing and conducting a simulation for a simple event. I hope you're doing well and enjoying your day. And I hope you'll join me for the last lesson in the textbook, 13.4. Bye.